we're going to continue our 300 dental anatomy facts and we're going to be focusing on the premolars. The maxillary first premolar has the most pronounced developmental marginal groove of any maxillary tooth. So here's that little picture of the marginal groove, very pronounced. And then this kind of carries on to the next point. So the maxillary first premolar has a mesial concavity that makes it difficult to adapt a matrix band. So these are actually two different things. So we have this developmental groove that carries on over to the mesial. And then there's a depression here, a concavity. So if you were to go underneath this mesial marginal ridge, you'd have a little concavity in there that could make it difficult to adapt the matrix band. The cervical cross section of the maxillary first premolar exhibits a kidney bean shape. And that's because of that mesial concavity. So if you were to take this little kidney bean and superimpose it over the top of the tooth, then that's the shape that the root would take. And then kind of carrying on with that, another way to ask this question, the cervical cross section of the maxillary first premolar exhibits a kidney bean shape on the pulp chamber floor. The non-molar tooth that most frequently exhibits three roots is gonna be the maxillary first premolar. And that's gonna be pretty easy to remember because we just have to think of the non-molar tooth that most frequently has two roots. So of the premolars, this one most frequently has either two roots or two canals. So it's not hard to imagine that it could maybe have three. And that's usually gonna be two buccal roots and one palatal root. The facial cusp tip of the maxillary first premolar is offset to the distal. And this is unique in this tooth because it's actually the opposite for the most part in all the other teeth. So because the cusp tip is offset to the distal, that means that these cusp ridges are gonna be a little bit different than other teeth. So in this case, the distal cusp ridge is gonna be shorter than the mesial cusp ridge. And like I said, it's usually opposite in all the other teeth. But take note here that this is the same for the maxillary canine in baby teeth. So make sure you know that for the maxillary first premolar and the primary maxillary canine. And then this is also the premolar with the steepest cusp inclines. Now this fact has to do with both the maxillary first premolar and the maxillary second premolar. So the maxillary premolar's lingual cusps are offset to the mesial. But remember that that maxillary first premolar's buccal cusp is offset to the distal, which is an exception when compared to most teeth. The maxillary first premolar is a big tooth, so it's the largest of all the premolars, and it is the posterior tooth that has the greatest cervico-occlusal crown height. Cervico-occlusal is just another way of saying crown height. So we're starting at the cervical and we're moving up to the occlusal. So it's got a big crown. Now remember the mandibular canine is the tooth with the longest crown. The non-molar tooth having the sharpest demarcation between pulp chamber and canal is the maxillary first premolar. Now, if you're anything like me, when you read something like this and you're in the test and you've got all this stuff going on in your head, you're going to read this and this is going to be your response. You're going to be like, what does that mean? But it's actually pretty easy to understand if we have a picture. Here's an interproximal view of the maxillary first premolar. And this right here is an obvious pulp chamber and this is an obvious canal. So there's an obvious demarcation between the two. You can definitely tell where one ends and one begins. Now, it's not so obvious on a, like an incisor you can't really tell where the pulp chamber ends and the canal begins. So because of these two roots, the maxillary first premolar has a very obvious demarcation between where the pulp chamber ends and the pulp canal begins. And then just a quick note here, due to that mesial concavity, it's easy to perforate on a root canal. So you have to be careful when performing root canal treatment. We're gonna move on to the maxillary second premolar. So this is the first premolar and this is the second premolar. The size and position of the cusps are more identical for the second maxillary premolar than the first. So the maxillary first premolar's buccal cusp is about one millimeter higher than the lingual cusp, and you can see the second premolar, they're about even. So the maxillary second premolar has two cusps that are about equal height, and then the maxillary second premolar is the most symmetrical posterior tooth, and that has to do with both of those cusps being so symmetrical and equal in height. 
and you'll notice there's only five different points to learn about this second premolar and three of them have to do with the cusp height and then the other two have to do with the occlusal surface. So when in doubt between a maxillary first or a second premolar, always go for the first premolar because it's more likely that that's going to be the one tested on because there's way more stuff that you can be asked about the first premolar. Instead of a long central groove with a few supplemental grooves, this tooth has a short central groove with lots of supplemental grooves that make it look wrinkly. So here we've got a little tiny central groove and then all these supplemental grooves that make the tooth look wrinkly. The maxillary second premolar has fossa that are closest in size compared to any other posterior tooth. So remember this tooth is symmetrical and so that goes for the cusp height and the fossa. We're gonna go down to the bottom arch, we're moving to the mandibular first premolar. The mandibular first premolar has a uniquely prominent triangular ridge. So if you look at this picture here, we've got a big triangular ridge going across here and that results in a unique anatomical feature called snake eyes. So we've got these two pits on either side of this really large prominent triangular ridge. So the occlusal aspect is described as looking like snake eyes. This tooth has no central groove and that's because it has a big triangular ridge running through it. So there's no way to run a central groove from fossa to fossa because it's interrupted by that large triangular ridge. The mandibular first premolar very frequently has a separate mesial and distal pit. And that's another way of testing on that idea of the prominent triangular ridge separating the two. This tooth has a mesiolingual developmental groove that originates from the occlusal pit. The mesiolingual developmental groove is going to extend onto the proximal surface. So if you're shown an image of the mesial view or the distal view, you should be able to tell which one is the mesial view based on that mesiolingual groove. The mesiolingual developmental groove makes the marginal ridge move downward in a 45 degree angle. Because the mesial marginal ridge slopes downward, you can see it's definitely lower than the distal marginal ridge. Also, when looking at the mesial view, you can see more of the occlusal surface than you can if you're looking from the distal view. So more of the occlusal surface can be seen from the mesial than the distal for the mandibular first premolar because that marginal ridge slopes downward at a 45 degree angle. So you can see how many different questions they can ask that just focus around this mesiolingual developmental groove. So that's a really important thing to understand about this tooth. In the rare event that there's a second canal for mandibular first premolar, it's usually gonna be located to the lingual. The mandibular first premolar is the only premolar that frequently has one pulp horn. The lingual cusp of the mandibular first premolar is about two thirds the height of the facial cusp. So you can see here, it's about two thirds the height of this facial cusp, which is much taller. And then the lingual cusp of the mandibular first premolar is similar in development to the cingulum of a canine. So if you look at this tooth and just kind of draw a line from this buccal cusp over to the lingual cusp and imagine we're turning it into a canine, this lingual cusp would look very, very similar to what the cingulum would be on a canine. The lingual cusp of the mandibular first premolar in normal occlusion is not gonna occlude with anything above it. And the mandibular first premolar has the most variation of all posterior teeth in the facial versus the lingual cusp height. So for the upper arch, remember we talked about how the lingual cusp is maybe about one millimeter lower than the buccal cusp. And then the second premolar, we talked about how those cusps are about the same height. So on the mandibular first premolar, those cusps, the height is not as cut and dry as it is on the top. There's a little bit of variation there. The mandibular first premolar, facial lingually, is the smallest of any posterior tooth. So we're going from a facial to a lingual direction. And so this is a small tooth. So this is way different from the maxillary first premolar, which is the biggest tooth of all the premolars. And then the mandibular first premolar is closest of all mandibular teeth in facial lingual versus mesiodistal diameter. Now they love to test on this idea about symmetry and size from the incisal view or from the occlusal view. So I'm just gonna remind you of the incisor lecture. We had a very similar topic here. So the maxillary lateral mesiodistal crown width is the smallest of all the maxillary teeth. And then remember the maxillary lateral has a mesiodistal measurement 
that is nearly identical to the facial lingual, closest of all anterior teeth. So very similar question. If we're in the anterior, it's going to be the upper lateral incisor. If we're talking about posterior teeth, it's going to be the lower first premolar. And then remember that the mandibular central has the smallest crown dimension of any teeth. And then just a refresher on that upper first premolar, it's got the largest crown height of posterior teeth. We're going to move on to the mandibular second premolar. When viewed from the occlusal, the basic coronal outline of the mandibular second premolar is a pentagon. Now you have to be very careful because they can actually ask two questions about two different shapes here. So we have crown outline, which is going to be a pentagon. And then we have the occlusal table here, which is going to be rectangular. Now the second premolar on the bottom is going to be a little bit unique because there's different variations of the tooth. There's going to be a Y type and there's going to be a crescent type. In the next couple slides, we'll go through the Y type, but on this one, we're going to just look at this crescent shaped variation. So the premolar that's most likely to have a crescent shaped central developmental groove is the mandibular second premolar. And the way we'll remember that is we think about this as a smile. So the mandibular second premolar is smiling at you and you're smiling right back because you know that you're almost done studying premolars. The shortest inner dental papilla is going to be between the mandibular second premolar and the mandibular first premolar. Now think about that mandibular first premolar. It's a really small tooth. And so it's going to have a really small inner dental papilla behind it. So now we're going to look at the Y type and it's called Y type here because of the shape that these developmental grooves take. And they almost form a Y right there. The Y type mandibular premolar has one facial cusp and two lingual cusps. And then moving over here, the Y type mandibular second premolar has the same number of occlusal pits as, and then you would have to pick which tooth and it's going to be the maxillary first molar. So there's three pits here, and there's three pits on the maxillary first molar. The mandibular second premolar is the only premolar with multiple lingual cusps. On that Y type, remember, it has two lingual cusps, one and two. And then this is going to be the only premolar with a lingual groove. Remember, the maxillary first premolar has a pronounced mesial marginal groove, and then the mandibular first premolar has a mesiolingual groove. And then this is gonna be the only premolar with a central fossa. Usually there's gonna be two, just two fossa, like a mesial and a distal, but this one has a central fossa. This is the most congenitally missing premolar, but that doesn't mean it's the most congenitally missing tooth. So you have to be careful how you read the question. So this is the second most congenitally missing tooth. So the order is third molars, then mandibular second premolar, and then maxillary lateral incisors. And if you want to be very specific, the most common is maxillary third molar, then mandibular third molar, then the mandibular second premolar, and then the maxillary lateral incisor. The premolar that most frequently has a central pit is the mandibular second premolar. So this is very similar to this point that we talked about here. It's the only premolar with a central fossa. So this is a little bit of a confusing one because you can get thrown off by the word single. So yeah, it has a single central pit, but it also has three pits in total. Let's do a quick little review here. So let's go back up to the maxillary first premolar. Remember there's a pronounced mesial marginal groove. It's got the largest incisal cervical crown height for a posterior tooth, and it's the biggest premolar. It's kidney being shaped in cross section. And that's because of that mesial concavity. It can be trifurcated. One facial cusp is to the distal. And so it's the only premolar with the shorter mesial cusp angle, which is the same for that primary maxillary canine. It's the premolar with the steepest cusp inclines. It's the non-molar tooth with the sharpest demarcation between pulp chamber and canal because it's got those two separate roots. And the lingual cusp is going to be about one millimeter shorter than the buckle. Now let's go over to the maxillary second premolar. This has a short central groove with lots of supplemental grooves which make it look wrinkly. The two cusps are pretty much equal in height. It's the most symmetrical posterior tooth and its fossa are the closest in size compared to any other posterior tooth and that goes along with that symmetry rule that we're remembering for this tooth. Now we're jumping down to the bottom. The mandibular first premolar has a very prominent triangular ridge it's got snake eyes, 
It's got that mesial lingual groove. It's got that mesial marginal ridge that's at a 45 degree angle. So remember when you look from the mesial, you can see more of the occlusal table. And it's the premolar with only one pulp horn. The mandibular second premolar can have two types. It can have a Y type and a crescent type. That Y type is gonna have two lingual cusps and one buccal cusp. And it's gonna have three fossa with one central fossa. So it is unique in that it is the only premolar that has a central fossa or a central pit. The crown outline is gonna be a pentagon and the occlusal outline is gonna be a rectangle. This is a fantastic review slide. So if you just understand everything in here, you're gonna see a lot of these points on the test and you're gonna do awesome. Thank you so much everybody for watching and let's go ahead and move on to the next video. Leave a comment down below about what your number one takeaway is from this video. Also, please subscribe and hit the bell. If you want a bunch more videos that are not on my YouTube channel, please check out my course. You can find it at PassTheDentalBoards.com.